Hey everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the VOD Squad, where we are once again all together. We've made it through the holidays. We're still breathing. We didn't die from our turkey comas. Oh. I'm Clyde. Hi, oh, Clyde. Are you okay? <laughs> Gonna fall asleep on you from my turkey. Hey, coma. hey, Matt. Matt, yeah. don't fall asleep because I need to introduce. That is Matt. That's falling asleep in the lower corner. Right <laughs> above me is Michael Aston. Hello. And our prodigal son, Jimmy. You're back. I'm back. I'm here. Good to have <laughs> you back. And I'm in Florida. Yay. <laughs> How you guys doing? I'm doing all right. Did you all have a wonderful holiday week and weekend? Sure yes. did. It was uh, pretty good. Got the little bit of turkey. Yeah. A little bit. I had two turkeys. It was amazing. Whew, I got so much leftovers, you have no idea. That's why I'm falling asleep. Oh, <laughs> it's too much turkey. A tryptophan overdose? A little bit. I mean, I've been having turkey sandwiches for lunch pretty much <laughs> ever since. So. Oh, that Ugh. that's no good. See, I like leftovers, uh, but I don't too. like when I have enough leftovers that I have to eat the leftovers multiple times. Ah, so in other words, you want enough leftovers for like, oh, I had enough food for one night and do that. And then the next day to go ahead. Usually and my dinner. leftovers are my breakfast and then ah. maybe a, another snack. But I think after two times, I'm pretty much done. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah mm. I don't know. Uh, no, got to make them go forever. Just keep on using them until they're gone. <laughs> Still, I don't know what it is about the the turkey sandwich. It's if you've ever seen, I think it was Friends, right, where Ross has his his post Thanksgiving the, turkey. The sandwich. moist maker. Yeah, I mean, it really there is something about Thanksgiving turkey on a sandwich that that is one of the best sandwiches of the year. It really is. Oh, so absolutely. I I had one of those. I did it on a croissant and Ooh. everything. It was just absolutely outstanding. Absolutely, it's just like wine. It gets better with time. <laughs> to a point. To a point. <laughs> Might not want to pull it out of the pull your turkey out of the fridge and throw it on a sandwich right now after a week. Uh, you can pull it out of the freezer, but then you got to wait for it to like defrost and. Mm -hmm. Your about a week is about up, and so yeah, about now is a good time to consider whether or not you're throwing it into the freezer or not. So, but yeah, leftovers are great, and you know, I don't know about you guys, but turkey sandwich is best had with cranberry sauce. It's the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I will hold my on? I will hold my thoughts about cranberry oh, sauce. No, but somebody doesn't <laughs> like cranberry sauce. Ah. Oh. So wrong. Okay. Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, this week has been full of lots of little stories. Should we get into it? Let's yeah, do it. I guess. Yeah, well, let's start with a little story about Plex. Plex says uh, had their little DVR function available to uh, everybody who's a Plex Pass receiver uh, subscriber for the uh, last uh, several months. And uh, this uh, allows them to go ahead and record shows over the air and onto it. And now they've got the ability, in fact, they just kind of snuck it in, to go ahead and delete the commercials from your recorded shows, which is kind of cool. It means that, you know, if you're watching, if you've decided to record your show, you come back, your machine has been chewing on it for a while and decides, hey, here's a version without your commercials. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. kind of awesome. The the one caveat on that is that it's going to re-render that entire video. So you probably don't want to be running your Plex server on your normal desktop while you're trying to do this. 
Um, well, and it does it automatically, right? So mm-hmm. my guess is you're if you're recording many shows, you're going to be pegging your CPU. Exactly, and that's the thing. You don't have any control over when it happens. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you want to probably have a dedicated machine that's uh, mm-hmm. pretty hardcore um, so that you don't uh, run into those problems. Yeah, plus, well, too, uh, I mean, I, I don't know how well this auto-detect when a commercial is, you know, works on these things. I mean, they, they just released it. I mean, Plex is a good company. I'm sure it probably works fine. But, you know, it right out of the gate like that, I don't know if I'd trust it or not. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd te- I would test it and make sure it works well before I, turning it loose on everything, right? I really question the, the choice. I mean, I get that actually removing the video, the... Uh, commercials saves a ton of space, right? Because commercials on a one hour show, they're about 20 minutes. So right. that saves, you know, what, a third of your of your space for a, a show. On the other hand, I would I would much prefer an option that just had it go through and detect the commercials and store like a meta file that told the the player, the Plex video player, where to skip and just have it automatically like fast forward past the commercials. So then you'd have the ability to rewind a little bit or, you know, if it missed its mark by a few seconds, um, you could skip back three seconds or whatever. And yeah, you'd take up more storage space, but uh, I'd be inclined to say that that would be a lot cleaner and safer solution. And then, you know, mistakes in timing won't matter because they you, it won't have cut out your show, and it would be much less processor intensive. Yep. So I'm actually going to be trying this likely soon, um, but unfortunately, my Plex server is a little tiny portable hard drive. So I'm hoping I can turn off that feature because the little ARM processor on that is probably not going to be enough to do this. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other news: We have uh, Amazon has uh, updated this uh, the various Fire TV devices, almost all of them, maybe not everyone, with a new, actually not new, their their Silk Silk browser, which is the web browser that they've made to uh, for their uh, various uh, Fire devices, their Kindle devices. Uh, it has a nice TV interface where you can go ahead and uh, um, browse almost any web page, and uh, it works pretty well. So. Um, I've seen just a video demo of its use, and it looks like it's a, a fairly decent little browser. It seems to pick up a lot of the uh, websites that are designed for uh, mobile devices, but being a 10-foot interface, that's actually not bad. Yeah, I I don't know what to think about this, because I, I, I've used the Silk browser on the Kindle, mm-hmm. and I have in the past cursed Google for removing the browser when they went to Android TV. So sure. I should be all for this. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, I'm not excited. And I well, don't exactly know why. Uh, well, I, I mean, for me, I, I mean, look at what's happened over the last few years, right? I mean, Reddit didn't go into a web browser, which is how we, uh, I mean, like Netflix, when it first started up, you know, is like, oh, okay, you went in a web browser and, and stream your content well now you know you got so many devices and all it's all on an app now so a browser on a over-the-top box like this is uh kind of pointless i would say it, it, at this time I, I i'm i don't know i mean there may be a few exceptions to that but you know by and large you know it's all on apps now uh, yeah hold on oh I, they say it's back now so found a thing or two where I wanted to look something up on a browser and I've always either my TV does my the web OS does have a browser built into it I've occasionally used that generally I'll just like mirror cast or mirror my 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 phone onto my TV mm-hmm. and look it up on my phone however mm-hmm. the biggest reason I don't like using the browser is because of how difficult it is to actually navigate a web page with a TV browser yeah, this adds um, basically Alexa support, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, buddy. So you can do voice recognition and do searches that way. So that actually might change things a little bit to be able to actually do your searches 
with your voice. You don't have to deal with the on-screen keyboards or even really the difficulty of a keyboard on your phone. Um, that's a bit of a compelling, a, a compelling reason to consider something like this. Um, I've used the Silk browser on a Fire tablet in the past and was unimpressed by it as a whole. But, um, you know, it's, it, it, I suspect it will be useful to people on a rare occasion and they'll be happy that they have it. But it seems like, like Clyde said, it seems like it's a little bit of a waste because I don't know that it's really something that people are going to use very much. Yeah. So I, I was just going to say uh, that echoes exactly why. I loved it with the Google TV was because the Google TV remote was a keyboard with a touchpad built into it. So mm -hmm. it was natural. Yeah. So the, the best uh, TV browsing experience I've ever had is either any normal laptop with the Chrome pl uh, Chromecast plugin and Chromecasting your browser window to your TV, which is awesome because it's literally you're mirroring your, your laptop. But uh, closer to this was either the Wii or Wii U's browser, which was built in. And those were both opera-based. Opera um, the Wii browser, because it had the nice uh, remote, you had a decent interface for uh, touching the correct thing, uh, items on the screen. And that was actually good back in the day. But the Wii U's one with the built-in tablet was actually really nice, also because you could press a button and you could shade the screen so everybody saw a curtain. Until you found the thing that you wanted to show everybody on the tablet, and then you could push another button, and ta-da! It showed everything that, that the thing you wanted to show. Uh, on there. So <laughs> it actually was a pretty nice way of being able to show web content without the boring. Okay, let me put this over here. Let me log in over there. Let me all do other stuff. It allowed you to, you know, be more a little bit better of a presentation kind of thing. I really liked it. So and you really needed the soundbite, ta-da! Right? You told, well, you know what? It was built in. You just had it. In fact, there was a drum roll you could do. You could press the button right; it would drum roll before it opened. It's awesome. <laughs> it was one of the coolest things or, ever. Or maybe well, have, a, have a "Here's Johnny." <laughs> uh, I think that's probably copyrighted. Uh, probably so. So uh, it's kind of cool. I want to see more web browsers on more of these uh, streaming devices. This is a good thing. So uh, I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, so I, uh, okay. I was just gonna say I. I would say, as a general rule, I find adding features is never a bad thing as long as it doesn't start to compromise the experience. But I suspect I'll use this twice ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's two times more than you could before. So, <laughs> so who wants 10K video? 10K. <laughs> oh, Are you insane? Yeah. You, but that's yeah. not. That doesn't, 10K doesn't make sense because everything's in a power of four. Uh, yes, I, but it should be what it's so, 16K. Right. Well, it's not going to be available in 16K, at least not in this version. Hey, everybody, we have a new HDMI standard. Official is version 2.1, and this is able to support up to 10K and up to about. 50 gigabits per second of data transfer over this link. Uh, that means you're probably going to, when you want this, you're definitely going to have to buy new cables. Um, <laughs> this is just the uh, future proofing of uh, technology. They're, they're being way ahead of what people are currently using, and they're making the standard ready for the future, no matter what that be. This is uh, a good step in the right direction for uh, giving a little headway over the 8K signal. So. Well, you know, I tell you the one thing that even the first little bit there in the second paragraph where it says 4K at 120 hertz. <laughs> now that, uh, for my old eyes, I would like to see that. That would. So be you want good. everything with soap opera effect? Because that's uh, what 120 uh, hertz does with well, the frame interpolation. Because everything's pretty much recorded in 60 frames per second, and then. No, no, Clyde, this is for video games. Yeah. <laughs> you hook your Xbox One or Pro or PS4 Pro or your... It would be your XYZ. <laughs> yeah, or or your high-powered uh, desktop PC through mm -hmm. HDMI out um, with 4K at 120 hertz. That well, makes a your, lot of sense. Your home Assuming you have a TV that can support that. What? Yeah. Your home movies could be in 120 hertz. Sure. They could. <laughs> well, I think they typically, well, yeah. 
if it if it was recorded on VHS, then they would already. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Well, it's uh, there are the monitors that are trying to do 4K at 60 hertz and even 120 at 120 hertz, okay. and are having trouble doing it over single cable. So this new spec does actually help those people who want to try to make this happen on a single cable and yeah, that... no having kind of frame matching issues or anything like that. So it's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, so I guess Clyde is probably right, though. We need the porn industry to adopt this, and then we'd get it, right? <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, I just remember when, like, the uh, LCD TVs uh, trying to get rid of the motion blur that made them pretty much unwatchable for sports. They said, oh, we fixed it with frame interpolation at and then uh -huh. you buy a TV that's 120 hertz, but then you watch everything and it just looks like plastic, uh, like home movies. I remember this, and I remember watching cartoons, and it looked good on that. Oh yeah, on cartoons, other it's things. Fine. I I saw like, a Whoa. demo. I saw a demo of some X Men movie where they were fighting on a bridge, and it looked like someone was there, like it was a soap opera, and it was so weird. And <laughs> some people love it. Some people love it, but it was just so weird. Um, sure, people get used to it, and some people will never get used to it. I, I I agree with what you're saying. Like, I think for regular TV, you should broadcast and you should view the content in the format and the speed and everything that it was made in, mm -hmm. um, and or at least that it's released in. Right? You know, mm -hmm. it, it's usually made in in better quantity quality than what they actually release it in. But um, but when it comes to systems like this, this just makes me think that's awesome. Now I can hook up my um, my desktop with a high powered graphics card and, and output it to a, a good TV and have it be able to not have ghosting and, and other issues. Because with a with video gaming high speed like first person shooter type games. Ghosting is a real issue, and until you get it up to about 60 hertz, you will see ghosting. So right. uh, 120 hertz is probably a little bit more than is absolutely necessary, though. <laughs> I do know people that absolutely swear that they can see ghosting and see artifacts at 60 hertz. So, I don't play anything unless it's starting at 144 yeah. megahertz. Arr. Yeah, I mean, most most gaming monitors run at 144 megahertz, right? Like, that's the, that's the thing. So... Um, or hertz, 140. I think it's hertz. just hertz. I use megahertz as an exaggeration. Of my apologies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they use they do run at 144 hertz because of that. I, I think that's probably overkill, legitimately, like realistically, but at least 60. Uh, so uh, we have another story about uh, Hulu and Disney getting together and making a little baby. Oh Hulu no, uh, and getting Disney <laughs> sitting in a tree. <laughs> S T R I M I N G. S T R E A M ing. <laughs> uh, they went ahead and decided to get some of the older shows from uh, the Disney's uh, ABC uh, shows, some of the ABC shows and Disney shows, and then giving the rights to Hulu for streaming. Uh, looks like they're picking up shows like Revenge, The Catch, Marvel's Agent Carter, which I'm jazzed about because I actually like that show, uh, Cougar Town. And perception and uh, a couple other ones out there. Oh, well, you missed so. it! You missed it. Um, Which one? Cougar Town. I did that. So <laughs> you you did that. I did that, but you couldn't see me behind the web page. But no, oh, Cougar Town's one of my favorite shows. Yeah. Yeah. They, they also the uh, designated survivor too. Uh, that's a good show. That that's a more recent show. Yes, it is. It's still on, I believe. I just wish that they would make more of the Agent Carter. That was an excellent show. And I, the the should, Agent Carter yeah. would have done much better if they hadn't been so restrictive about uh streaming. Cuz I tried to watch it on its mm -hmm. first run. It you couldn't watch the you could only watch the previous episode on Hulu. You couldn't watch anything past. And I traveled to CES right in the middle of it. I missed like three episodes of the first season and I couldn't, they never allow me to catch up and then it didn't show up anywhere. So then when season two came out, I didn't bother because they wouldn't let me watch season one. Um, and, 
and I know I'm not the only person. So, yeah, they did that to themselves. Yeah. Uh, well, but did you see the... Blossom is also on the list? Oh my god! <laughs> no, no, that show. I don't know how in the world that 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 show. I, I mean, I, I don't six. understand that show. It was all about Just... six. She was so hot. I don't understand but... that show. It started running down Lawrence. this list, and I was just like, don't care, don't care, don't care. Oh, Agent Carter, that was a good <laughs> show. I, I, I might watch that again, and probably not yet. It's it's only been, you know, I watched it when it came out. I'll probably wait another year or so, but probably watch that again. And then I was like, don't care, don't care, don't care. This, uh, I guess that it's important to announce your, your deals, but uh, there's not much there that seems very interesting to me. So the only other show on this list that looked really good uh, that I might get back into is I believe I've seen an episode or two of Perception, and that was a pretty decent show. So he's just a yeah he's just a guy with a uh, what is he schizophrenia? So he saw everything in a different way than everybody else did. So it's your standard cop show though. Otherwise, mm -hmm. which show is that? It's called Perception. Oh yeah, I never saw that. I think it was on ABC. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds um, like it'd be good. Yeah, this this is this seems like a win win for everybody, and I I mean Hulu has gotten Disney stuff in the past here and there, and yeah, I mean they 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 need more. So, <laughs> cool. well, you get if you guys are a big fan of the uh, uh, social uh, media features like uh, stories that are on Instagram and uh, Snapchat, which I never really used. Guess what? Now you can do it on YouTube! YouTube has, a, has announced the feature that allows you to make a special mini video for your for other people to view uh, called Reels, where you will be able to stitch together a couple of your short little videos to get, and put some either some type of text over it or maybe some uh, music over it and make a short little story for you to share. I don't know. It seems like it could be something uh, decent, but... I don't know. We'll have to see it before me to know about it. I'm not big into the Snapchat thing, but it, the, the fact that it's going to be hosted on YouTube pro means that it will probably get yeah, you'll probably be able to get a lot of views out of it if you are uh, the kind of person who is able to work the social media correctly. So, so you know, for me now, you know, I, I use Instagram, and and they have this feature on Instagram, and when they first put that feature on Instagram, I was, I was like, oh. Hey, Instagram's trying to be like YouTube now, right? Have little mini videos on there. And now I see YouTube <laughs> doing what <laughs> Instagram does. <laughs> you know, the, the same thing. I, I don't know. It, to me, it's just uh, kind of strange. Kind of strange to have this feature on YouTube. It, it, it's uh, them definitely branching out and going out into that social market. And we know notoriously that Google's never been really great at the social thing. I mean, I like Google Plus, but oh, I love Google else Plus. Did. I still do. So uh, I still do too. And it's uh, yeah. but it wasn't the it wasn't the big hit that the Facebook it, it was, turned so. into something different than what yep. they wanted. And what I think it is different is better, which I agree. is why I still love. Google Plus. It's a community thing. It's more it's, about community. Yeah, it's community. It's civil, civility. You join a group, and if you don't like it, you leave the group. Leave the group. And <laughs> it's like, done. Yeah. It's not like Facebook, everybody screaming into the void. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, and uh, YouTube, I mean, they've gone way out of their way to limit what you can do in the social aspect because of people being bad stewards of uh you know and so i i don't know i don't know if i mean it, it's cool if like my kids want to take a bunch of videos and stitch them together and put some music to it yeah they'll probably dig that well I, I wonder I don't know if what it, i'd do with it i wonder if you know how long it limits you to make a video on this i mean is it limited to like a two minute video max or something like that so you have to be very careful about what you choose to put in it or i don't well, know well, I don't know. Here's a clue. Why don't they just do a YouTube video that does the same thing? <laughs> That's a good point. You make a very valid point, sir. Because you can't grab multiple little videos and stitch them together easily without, you know, expensive software. 
it seems like it could be interesting thing. All right, we're going to move on to uh, a new little guy that really piqued my interest. Uh, there's going to be a mobile game coming out next year that's based on the X-Files television series. Uh, the game is called, what did they call it? Deep State, X-Files Deep State. It should be coming out in February, where you will take the on the story, the, the guise of an FBI agent and looking into these beyond normal, you know, strange and weird things happening and try to figure out what's going on and do your investigation of the fields. And they're supposed to be um, go right along with the series as a, like a, a side story or behind the scenes. This looks like something that if you really are enjoying the new series, which I've been trying to catch up to, I think we're in season six or something like so that. We're trying right to... about the point that it starts getting unwatchable. <laughs> we took a break and we took watch some other stuff and we've been slowly getting back into it and we're gonna we're gonna chew through it we're gonna try to get there so we can get back in the, because we really want to see season 10 which is finally coming back out on hulu and uh we're so we can also watch it with season 11 we really want to do that so i will say i was skeptical when season 10 came out i went into it expecting bad things but optimistically hopeful and absolutely loved it mm -hmm. and i would say you anybody that watched the x-files like the early seasons um if you watch the movie um you can skip most of the later seasons and then just go to season 10 because mm -hmm. season 10 is where they start to tie everything up and it was awesome very cool. cool this this looks really cool to me i love the idea of being able to be involved in some way even if it has no impact on the show being being involved in some way with the world that you're viewing on the tv um i i haven't seen it done in a compelling way but it it, it seems terribly exciting and and like a lot of fun and as long as this is super casual, like it appears like it's going to be, then this will probably be really successful. I think the other places that I've seen this done, they have been more serious. Like um, it was a sci-fi show. I can't remember off the top of my head the name of it, where it was supposed to be really heavily integrated and there were going to be like story arcs that completely shared and it was going to be... Uh, you know, really, really densely tied together. The only and, one I'm thinking of is The Matrix, the video game. <laughs> no, this was, it was like a an MMO or something like that, like that went along with a live broadcast uh, TV show. Mm. And um, it, it was a few years back. And it just, like, I never heard anybody get terribly excited about it once it actually started happening. People talked a lot about it when it was, when it was going to start. But, um, the thing is that that requires so much direct engagement and timing, time sensitive engagement, right? Like you had to make sure you played the video game between episodes of the TV show so you didn't, so that you were able to keep constant with the timeline of everything and you didn't miss things in the video game before the next episode aired. And it was just, it, it the, the one or two people that I talked to that actually did it and bought the game and played it. They said that it was really like chore like, like it was fun to play, but they always felt like they had to do things and they had to make sure they were so on like top catching of Pokemons or linking portals in ingress. Mm -hmm. At first, it's like, this is cool. And then it's like, crap, I got to drive around town. I'm going to guess the TV series is called Defiance. That sounds right. I, yes, but that's what I wanted to say, but it, it didn't. I, I don't know how okay maybe because I but I, I I don't know how you would link defiance into reality because defiance is way in the future. Well, it wasn't in reality at all. It was in a video game. Okay. There was a video game that you played, and it was supposed to have story arcs that oh. coincided with the TV show. I kind of like defiance. I need to go back and finish the final season. And. And one thing I'll say here about, about this, I think this is a smart play by them because I, I think it, this really does play to the uh, millennial audience and, and get them involved with it. Uh, you know, if you can, if you start coming out with uh, TV shows that also has a companion game, then um, 
I think that's a, a real good play for the uh, younger audience or the I, millennial audience. I was going to say, if your business model is to engage millennials, I think you're in trouble because that's kind of their <laughs> thing is they don't get involved in things. <laughs> Hey, that guy became popular. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. 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 There are, there are those hipsters. That's what they do. Yeah, oh, I got too popular. <laughs> no, but the, seriously, uh, you were talking earlier, and I was like, going, the, the Matrix movies and the video game were supposed to do exactly that. You were supposed to be filling in some of the background. And you, apparently, you did just a tiny bit of background fill in of, in the Matrix movie with the video game, but the game sucked so bad that. Yeah, and the technology <laughs> really wasn't there to engage. Like, oh. It was something you had to pre write, and there was no way to really do any. Now, with social media and these apps that can be, you know, you can change storylines and push on the fly, which, you know, now it makes sense. Um, yeah, and X-Files is perfect because it does have a Monster of the Week uh, formula for the most part that you can just, you can keep filling that in with uh, with the episodes of the game. So this is good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and this doesn't, like, my hope is, like I said, that it's it's really casual and it doesn't, rely on stuff i think that it would be great if they just dropped little hints into the video game of events that happened in the show just mm -hmm. but otherwise let it just be in the same world so you're engaging with the with the world and kind of some of the events and you can do it when you want to and stuff but maybe there's just little hints of of the actual things like maybe occasionally you do meet Mulder and scully and or whatever you know you i think read one of their you read one of the reports or something like that it, exactly that would be perfect <laughs> uh so we're gonna move on our last story is a story if you're a big fan of espn it's a little sad looks like espn has a let had to let go 150 employees uh as they are now dealing with cord cutting had to oh what do you mean by that oh, i don't know Get, get, been, carry on. We'll, it, we'll get into that. It has been reported that 150 employees had to be laid off, have been laid off, and that they uh, they made a nice little letter sitting out that they're going to go ahead and give everybody that they eliminated a decent bonus for 2017 and severance pay and health benefits that are you know con are extended and outplacement services. It sounds like they're being really nice to these guys for letting go. But uh, most of these guys, where do the most of these guys come out of? So, so. This is usually uh, one of those things where it's like we got a bunch of people that we can't legally fire, and then you uh, oh now we've got a reason. Okay, who's got to go? Who you've been trying to get rid of? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> We're really sorry, but it's you know a good way to clean house. Uh, you know it it sucks uh, for those people, but it sounds like all these people were in like production, uh, so. It's not like there aren't other places to work uh, that, you know, maybe they need to go work, uh, move over to like a Hulu uh, project or a Netflix project or something. Netflix, there's lots any of, of stuff. The big, any of the major studios. Uh, yeah. No, it's not like there's any shortage of uh, content creation right now. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm looking at, you know, it's a shame you're not using the Chrome browser there. Or if you are, uh, maybe you get the ads turned off or whatever. Uh, but I'm looking at this article here in uh, in my Chrome uh, browser on my computer here, and it's it's really funny because it's you know the article you read the article yeah we're laying off approximately 150 people at ESPN uh -huh. you know their, their jobs are being eliminated right and then off to the right the, there's a banner ad that says FUBU TV watch sports <laughs> live. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adding that's, that's insult nice. to injury. Yeah. yeah. I think th there's a couple of things happening here, though. I, I think that, you know, everybody wants to blame cord cutting, but I don't know that it's totally fair to, to just blame cord cutting. I think the reality is that America is is falling out of love with professional sports to some extent. I think... You know, when I talk to younger individuals, especially, I see a lot less interest, a, a lot less of this rabid interest in a sports team than I than I am than I remember 
when I was younger. You know, when I was in my 20s, um, everybody had their top 10 favorite sports teams, you know, like, and watching sporting events was a huge deal. People got together and watched sporting events on TV. I don't see that happening very much anymore, especially with the younger generation. Even with my generation, the, we've stopped, a lot of us have stopped watching as much sports on TV. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's, it's, I mean, I think it's a lot of things, but people are just fine. There's more things to do with your time that are, mm-hmm. that are more enjoyable from a, from a watching perspective. There's so much more good content that's readily consumable. We're no longer constrained to the idea of we have to watch what's on the five channels that are on TV at right now. It's at, with time shifting and all that kind of stuff. There's just so much that people can watch. Why would they spend so much time watching sports that they don't really care about? You know, I only watch one game a week during the football season, and that's it. I will probably never watch any other sports teams unless I'm visiting my dad and he has something on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I think that's and, – and I might even be an exception for people that – for a lot of people that I have one team that I watch every single show of, right? Like, do any of you guys watch every, every game of any team? No. Right. I mean, we know Clyde doesn't watch any sports. I Matt watch, watches I, the Raiders every, every week. Yeah. You, you, you catch every Raiders game mm-hmm. and Matt, you occasionally watch some baseball, but that's it. Yep. I, I like it, especially background or when I'm like, I just don't want to think. I want to just focus on something. It's great for that, you know, because it's fun to but watch. You're, but you're not like 100% faithful, right? No. Like, I mean, I try, I try to get out to a game once a year, just, but yeah, I'm just not like I'm following them see. constantly. Yeah. And, and I think, I think this is the problem ESPN has is that people just aren't willing to spend the time and the energy in, in sports that they used to. There's just more options for what we can do. The internet is what is killing uh, ESPN, not Hulu or Netflix or whatever. It's the internet in general. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And but you know, at the same time, you know, I, I cut the cord last January, and I have to admit, you know, since cutting the cord, uh, I watch less sports now. Right? It's just not that. Uh, I, I think you're describing me to a T. You know, my interest has definitely declined over 2017. No, no doubt about it. Yeah, but you still have access to the shows, right? You I do. I do. Yeah, so. yeah. I still have access, uh, but I just find, you know, it's just like it's not as important. And, and I think the reason why it's not as important as you were describing the time shift, right? Yeah, I can watch it later. I can watch the highlights after the game. You know, that that's good enough, right? Yep. Well, like that is basically our news for the week. Well, and there was other news that I know everybody has been waiting to find out. What? What did you guys get for Black Friday? Oh, <laughs> my goodness gracious. Oh. I mean, did you guys find anything good? I uh, I bought only a couple things. Only a couple things? <laughs> um, mainly, I bought four Google Home Minis so I oh. could, so I could get uh, four ten dollar Best Buy gift cards. Yep, and <laughs> that's it. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> because I was not going to go out. It was available on the website. I ordered them, and then I set them for store pickup. And then on Sunday evening, when nobody was <laughs> at the store, I went and I picked them up. Well, I just happened to pick up three of those myself too. Ooh. Just so you know. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, hey so Google. Now- <laughs> Say hi. Oh, hi, Mr. Man. I don't know if you heard that. I did not hear that. Okay. You know yeah, what? I, Go ahead. I, I I definitely saw the Google Home and was interested in it, but I've already jumped in on the on the Amazon Echo ecosystem, so I guess I'll just stick there. It, there there are some compelling. Um, integrations that you get with the Android with like your Android account and stuff that that makes Google Home compelling but you know what what's the difference it's not significant enough for me to switch back 
because no, I really it, it's one of those things that if them. if you're an Amazon person and you live in the Amazon ecosystem, it makes perfect mm-hmm. sense to have an Amazon Echo. Um, I am not, which is why I haven't purchased one, and I was hesitant to buy a Google Home because for as little use. As I could see myself getting out of it, I couldn't justify the money, even for a mini at 50 bucks. But when it's on Black Friday for 29 plus you get a $10 gift card, mm-hmm. then I said, oh, okay, I buy four. I've now got $40 in gift cards that I can do whatever with, and I'll use one to try it out because I've been wanting to try it out, and the rest I can give away. I've Christmas got presents. Christmas presents. Yeah. There you go. That's actually a really good deal. What actually we did is we set these out through, up through the house. And so I've got one downstairs. i got one upstairs. i got one in the middle room. We had one before. So we got a total of four of these now in the house spread out. And well, the best thing you could say is uh, you can say Google, broadcast, and just say what your message is. And it just tells that through the whole house, which is really nice because we have, a, we have three stories in this apartment. So we could be upstairs and my son could be downstairs and I can be say, okay, tell him it's time for bed. And he'll hear it and he'll come up and go to bed. <laughs> it's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, I did make, I think I find we can finally put the, the argument to bed uh, over which is more popular, the PS4 or the Xbox One. Ooh, because the PS4 can, Slim was on sale for one ninety nine, pretty decent, uh, but the Xbox One S was on sale for ten dollars less. Okay. I couldn't find a PS4 anywhere, but even <laughs> on Sunday, everywhere I went, there were still piles and piles oh. of the one eighty nine Xbox One S. Wow. Mm. I was seriously tempted to pick up the PS4 just so that I could buy Skyrim VR. Um, but I couldn't justify like the ultimate like $650 oh, no. expenditure to do that. Cause I don't have a PS4 and I don't have the, the PlayStation VR set up. So that's like 350 on black Friday. It was 350 and like 300 or something for the good version of the PS4. So it's like, eh, okay, 650 bucks. I might as well buy a Vive, um, which I also didn't want to buy because I don't have a room to put it in. Um, <laughs> so ultimately, I got really tempted to buy a lot of stuff, and I bought I, – I, I was at Walmart or Target, Target, and I saw a razor, a really good price on a Harry's razor kit. Okay. It's like 15 bucks included four extra blades. Obviously, I haven't used it because um, <laughs> shaving is pain. It doesn't look like it works very well. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, but they, they're, they're really great razors. So I was I was super stoked to find that, that awesome deal because it also included like buy one, get one half price. So my wife got like a lotion set that was a similar kit. that mm-hmm. was part of the same deal. And so she was like, oh, yeah, this is really nice. I like these. And so... She got that at half price. So it, that was literally all I bought. That's <laughs> it. it? Was, I was not compelled by any of the deals. Uh, yeah. I, I was kind of there with you on that, Mike. You know, I mean, I think I, I mentioned this er, you know, earlier in the year, maybe a couple of months ago, that I was you know, considering uh, buying like a, a 4K uh, OLED TV. And... Mm-hmm. So I was watching the price on that. I was looking at the LG OLEDs, and uh, you know, for the one that I was looking at, it was about like three grand, or maybe just a little bit more than three grand before Black Friday. And then Black Friday rolled around, and okay, they they knocked like maybe three hundred bucks off the price, you know, something like that, you know, which is decent, I would say, but um, um, but um, you know, I don't know. It, to me, it just didn't feel right because I think that if I did pull the trigger and buy that thing, that six months from now, those things would be like south of two thousand dollars or something like that. You know, when when the new ones come yeah. out. And and so so I, I got to thinking about what Clyde said when I mentioned that a couple of months ago. And Clyde said, "Hey, you know what? 
you should go out and look at the high sense television which did have a uh -huh. good quality picture and uh -huh. here so so my thought is now wait until after christmas because i'll and pick up that high sense and just let that be my television until the OLEDs drop down to yeah. you know something like under fifteen hundred or something. I mean, like that. there right. was Best Buy had a doorbuster that I don't, uh, I know it's probably not as big as you want, but it was a I think a fifty five inch Sharp with mm -hmm. a Roku TV for one eighty seven, mm -hmm. which was a great deal. Uh, you know, um, we were gonna point that out to you, but you weren't here last week, um, mm -hmm. but. Uh, even when it outside of Black Friday, it's like on sale for like three fifty, which you know is a really really nice TV. Uh, you mm -hmm. you can probably find it on Craigslist right now for like three around three hundred bucks for the people that bought it for one hundred and eighty seven. I've seen like <laughs> five or six of them already, but uh, turning them around, yeah, on Facebook <laughs> Marketplace and. Um, but you know those those high sense. I mean, they're still you know LED. You know, but uh, but it's got a very good quality picture. I mean, I, I did look at it at Best Buy, and yet you can pick up the 65 inch, which is the size I was looking for. You can pick up one of those for like 800 bucks, I think, something like that. Okay. Which is you know, which is a a lot less than the 3,000 that I would spend on the OLED, and uh, and especially knowing that I, I don't know, I just got to I don't know it for for anything, but. I just got a feeling the price of those are going to drop by summertime. Those things will be like a thousand dollars less than what you'd pay now. Potentially. <laughs> um, actually I saw an article and I didn't put it in here, um, earlier, something about right now, LG's OLED TVs are like massively, uh, marked down. Mm -hmm. So might be something you want to look out at because well, they got okay. So you can get an LG 65 inch OLED, uh, the lesser the one that has the lesser processing, right? For like about twenty two hundred dollars, you can get that now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but but that's uh, you know I don't think I would if you look at that one they don't do the HDR all that well. Right, the the processing just isn't as strong. That's the reason why it costs. It's got that price reduction. So the the one you really want is going to cost. Uh, I think you can pick one up for about maybe twenty seven hundred dollars, right? The one that you really want. Well, yeah. And, and in the oh, in and, the chat, uh, TP Poker said he got a seventy five inch Sony for uh, twenty seven hundred. Yeah. Oh, twenty seven inch. No. Uh, seventy five. No, seventy five inch. In for 2700 oh for 20 well that was a good price for yeah. a 75 inch yeah 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 that that was a real good price uh unfortunately i didn't i didn't see that you no. know I, I didn't see the those uh deals around where i live that like i say the best one i saw was like 2700 for a 65 inch and that was a um uh, that was the lg one the, the one with the better processing yeah well I also picked up a couple of things, uh, but not on Black Friday. I went for Cyber Monday deals. Mm -hmm. um, I did end up picking up uh, one of the uh, HD Home Run uh, Connects, oh, which uh, takes wow. the that's the model that takes the, uh, the cable card. I'm going to be calling up my cable company that I still have, I know, and uh, I'm going to be able to see if I can record onto my uh, my Plex server with that. Uh, that's going to be my little goal thing there. Uh, the other thing I also picked up is I picked up the new set of uh, headphones. These little cheap guys have been really good for me, except for the, the ears are just a little small for my ears. To kind what, of, what, kind of... Are those, is that the PDP level two? Uh, these are super cheap Sennheisers. Oh. But the ones I picked up were actually, uh, they're, they're, it's a gaming headset. It's a HyperX Cloud, HyperX Cloud uh, headset. Um, because, quite frankly... Uh, it was on sale. It was less than twenty five bucks. It was a good deal, and they're nice headphones. So we're gonna try. We're uh, gonna try. Yeah, it out. it's funny. The reason I asked that was because I did stop into GameStop on uh, Friday morning because I was driving down the street and there was literally nobody in the parking lot, and <laughs> I wanted to see up in. I was up in Superior, Wisconsin, um, smaller dying town. Figured, oh. well, you know, I was looking for because. Uh, Valve or Steam was clearancing their uh, Steam Connects 
for five mm. bucks and I went to wow. see if they had one. And the dude was like, oh, yeah, we got to buy it. I was like, really? And then the girl behind the counter, she like, no, no, we don't. You're thinking of the other thing. He goes, oh, yeah, they're in the same package. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I saw these, which is the PDP level two for like 15 bucks. I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I needed a actual gaming headphones um, mm -hmm. for when I eventually finally get that PS4 so I can play that one game that I want to play. I can use my headphones into the thing and then... But uh, Last but not least, I did uh, spend a little bit of money on a... Uh, on a, uh, not a, not the blue Yeti, but the blue snowball. Ooh. When I got, got one of those little microphones, it'll replace this old mic I've been using forever. Uh, so you, I might actually sound a little better soon. We'll see. So it was fun. We, uh, it, I, it sure felt like a, uh, a weekend full of spending money. I really didn't need to. How about you guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I, I went out to a few stores trying to find some deals that I was excited about and spend some money. And I, I guess I'm just too miserly. I just didn't see anything that really compelled me The the big thing for me is that kind of, kind of like what it sounded like you were insinuating Jimmy is that like the deals are just as good so much of the rest of the year. Like you mm -hmm. just watch for a good deal. You'll find a good deal. That's almost mm -hmm. as good. Now the door buster deals, like the, the one you mentioned, Clyde, and like the um, the Google Homes for thirty bucks, there are some deals that still are like super great deals, but they're usually limited. They're usually hard to get to, and you got to be on the on your ball to catch those. And and I just I don't want to put that much effort into it. No. It's not it's not <laughs> worth the energy to to save a few bucks. Well, I guess that, that's the thing when you understand how Black Friday works. Those door busters, those are just to get the people in the store. And when they're in the store, then they're thinking they're in the mindset of saving. They see something that's on sale. They go, oh my God, this is great. Even though it's the normal price or the same sale price it will be next month and it was <laughs> last month. You know, but... uh I, I I worked I worked Black Friday a couple sun uh or a couple years uh at the Comp USA and I I know that those doorbuster deals there's no guarantee how many are there some stores make that that sh sharp TV was a killer deal at 187 bucks um but there's no guarantee that your store actually has more than one right you're only guaranteed that every store that's listed has at least one and you know is it worth it to you to try and you can always tell which ones those are going to be because they're the ones that are in store only not available online so i don't even right. bother trying um yeah uh, if it's not available online um then i'm not interested but like i said uh that google like with that google home mini that was on sale everywhere for the same price, 29 bucks. But Best Buy had that additional kicker of an, you know, $10 gift card. So I said, you know, that, that was the only reason I bought those from Best Buy. Um, or, and probably the only reason I bought four. Um, otherwise, I might have just gotten one. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it was an amazing uh, weekend of, or, uh, as far as the sales went. I mean, of what is the five billion dollars? And now, mm -hmm. Amazon, uh, now they're declaiming that uh, what's his name, uh, Bezos, is the richest <laughs> man in the world. Yeah. And oh yeah. gosh, we are consumer nation. Hundred billion dollars. Hundred billion. I mean, how? Geez, it's a million. It's it's insane, guys. And That's... we. You know, that is totally insane. I mean, geez, like just a few years back, he was like way lower, like top 10, maybe barely. And he's skyrocketed a lot over the, like the last few years. That's pretty impressive. Well, Amazon I mean, is becoming the king of the world. Amazon is uh, the company that, you know, we've been warned about. 
which that's that's why I'm just totally subscribing and, and getting in because hopefully I'll get um, long term subscribers. So that way, when when when, actually when take over the world. I was gonna say, yeah, that way when uh, they Amazon enslaves us, uh, you get preferential treatment because you <laughs> have been loyal yeah. to the company for a long time. Amazon, I love you. You're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Don't forget this. <laughs> So uh, when by and large, by and large goes under, I will I'll be okay because I'll be okay with uh, <laughs> I'll be able to you know survive without their 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 corporate system, right? Yeah. Okay. All well, right. I think um, that brings us to the thing that's not going to play now. Rants, <laughs> graves. <Grace, urgh. laughs> Can we rant about the rent? trailer yes <laughs> darn trailer not playing correctly and right now the screen is blank oh no it's better all right Arr. all there right so rants and raves Who, who's ranting who's raving what what do we got what do we got i got both rant and rave oh rave I really enjoyed the free beta of Battlefront 2. It was awesome, especially the space battles, the best thing ever. I so much wanted to play that game. I was like, like, oh, crap. Look at all this negativity that's coming around about this game. I mean, it's huge news. It's prop it's like the biggest thing to happen to EA since, I don't know, forever. Uh, it it's a lot of people are boycotting it. There's a lot of talk about, you know, should you buy this game? There's a lot. Of, is there going to be some legal uh, uh, action taking against loot boxes? I'm like, like, I don't know if I should have that. So the question is, comes up to my brain. And I'm asking you and I'm asking everybody else. Should I be buying Battlefront 2? Should I wait? I, should I totally never buy it? A lot of people it? have been talking mad crap about that game, saying it's not good. Yeah, it's uh, flawed. Is the short is the short answer. Oh, okay. So, so the two things, and, and I haven't gotten deep into it, but the two things that I heard is that it's basically the same as Battlefront One. Oh, so it's just repackaged. And you know, there's there's no significant improvements, which makes you say, well, why why the two instead of just a DLC release? Um, the other thing that I've heard is the is the the controversy over the loot crates. Apparently, I was I, I have heard secondhand. I haven't verified by reading any actual articles that like Germany is enacting a law is like drafting a law right now uh, to outlaw loot crates as hmm. um, as gambling. Um, kind and, of like up until recently in Canada, pinball was illegal because it was considered gambling. I think it still yeah. technically is. Well, I mean, the thing, the thing about loot crates that's that's I, I don't like, and and I, I've dealt with them on in other games and things is you pay money to get access to something, and then you get something that is worth virtually nothing because it is well, it's virtually worth something, but it is literally worth nothing. It is something in a game, and it may not be good either, right? Like. You don't know what you're getting, so you may get a bunch of worthless stuff that's not even useful in the game, and you just spend a lot of money on it. And so, so you are gambling on spending real-world money to get something that is possibly worth something in your game, and possibly worth absolutely nothing, even in your game. Well, so there's... It, let's say most games, though, you're guaranteed to get like for lack of a better word uh something that's like at least one basic epic thing right what, well that's most games i mean it kind of depends like I, one game that i play right now is star wars galaxy of heroes and it's not loot crates right but you pay x number of gems and you can get gems free and you get between five and 330 shards to to power up your characters and that's like, you know, you're probably going to get five, but you might get 330. And so that's that's one thing. And then there's other ones where you get, okay, yes, I'm paying $10 and I'll get 25 shards straight up. I know what I'm getting. But the ones that you use, your crystals, that again, you can get them free, but you probably aren't getting enough. 
free, so you're going to spend money to get the crystals to buy the things. And that's probably, it, it, that is very similar to a loot crate, where what you get is going to be worth something, but it might be worth very, very little, or it might be worth a whole lot. And that's the problem with the, that's what I have heard about Battlefront's loot crates, is that they are not consistently good, and you're paying real money for something that has a high probability of being very, like, of very little value relative to the money you spent. So uh, I'm going to put a little context into here. The problems uh, there are many folded over, and a lot of people have different. I mean, some people the issue one is more more important than another. Uh, the game is sixty dollars. You're paying up front. A lot of the games that have loot crates in it that have, have any kind of value in it are free games, usually mobile games that uh, require you to somehow spend some money to move ahead, move progression ahead at a faster rate than the normal thing. Then you have the fact that the, what's in the crates sucks, generally. Actually, it seems like the, no matter what you do, it's uh, you, the, you really rarely get anything good out of the crates. It's really rare to get things. When you do get good things uh, out of the crates, they can increase your ability to win at the game a lot because you actually get things that actually increase your performance. It means you reload faster. It means your your cooldown goes faster. It means you heal temporarily. It means you can jump farther. Things actually change in the game to make it unfair versus somebody who doesn't have something versus somebody who does. Somebody could spend money and get a lot of those those things. Spend a lot of money and get all the things and become and all even open up characters they couldn't you can't normally get without being very lucky. Mm. Or you could spend a lot of time playing the game and they found out that you would play the game even if you sucked you got a certain number of credits for each game and so people were just putting rubber bands on their controllers in order to hold down the buttons so that the people were standing there shooting and walking in one direction uh, so that no the game would be over the the, the, tr the match would be over they'd get their minimum credits and then they would just do this day over and over and over again ruining the game the storyline is too short for some people because it is very short, apparently. And apparently also it's kind of... Uh, it was supposed to go in one direction and it goes completely in the other direction and some people think it's candy ass, but that's okay. And, uh, yeah, that the uh, the game is based very much like the earlier game in many ways, except, except the space combat, which is the thing I like! <laughs> <laughs> which is, like totally cool i want to play that it's that was the best part of that demo by a long shot shot i really enjoyed that and i since i want that again and that looks like fun should i buy it or not i don't know i think i'm i think if i nobody knows nobody gives me a good answer i'm going to come up with my own answer which is i'm going to wait until ea fixes things and or drops the price a lot i was going to say here's bucks. how you know because it's coming out of beta you won't be able to play it right no, it's for sale now. It's no, 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 no. Horribly. I mean, without buying it. Without buying it, right. you won't be able to continue playing it, right? No. Yeah. All right. Don't buy it right now. And in a week or so, you'll know if you need to buy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's just yeah. fun. And now I think we know the real story of why professional sports is declining. <laughs> Video games! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Also, <laughs> there be money in them crates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tried I tried Battlefront 1 and I suck at online competitive play <laughs> so badly. I <laughs> I I can do pretty decent when I put the game on easy or normal level and just like play against the AI, but when I get to competing against real people, I suck and it's really not fun to just get constantly owned it is i i played i think it was battlefront that was the one they introduced hoth with the snow speeders right yep okay so i played that because i wanted to fly one of the snow speeders but i played it like i play all games where everybody's over there doing what they're supposed to and i'm just screwing around in a snow speeder <laughs> and and then after a while it's like i run out of stuff to do and it's like okay now i got bored and i walked away um okay. Uh, so there were problems with the first game that they fixed a, a decent number of them. Like there was way too much DLC for you that felt like you, you didn't really get a complete game with the first one. And they promised no, D all the DLC will be free with the second one and all that. But that's okay. 
I think I will wait and we'll see what happens with uh, with the crate gate as it's being currently being called. <laughs> and uh, but the other thing I wanted to talk about, this is definitely my rant. On one of these last couple of days, two days ago, I got the Windows update for 1709, which is the Fall Creators update. Cool. Uh, needs to reboot. Okay. Let it reboot. Comes back up and it says, oh, something went wrong. Oh, okay. Um, let's go ahead and just let it run again. Re reruns, re downloads the update. It really takes a long time to figure out that what it's going to do. Time to do it. Okay. Let it run the update again, finally. My computer doesn't boot. Oh. Says you need to in, you need to select a valid boot device and it's like what the oh. so I get the DVD out I plug it into the system I try to use the repair tool to use the fix drive you know fix MBR and all those options to try to get that working nothing works Grr. but I am able to see my C drive from the command prompt on the recovery disk and I can see all my files there so the disk is fine there's nothing wrong with it stupid Windows so I went. Mm. Crap. Screw it. I went ahead and erased my hard drive, reinstalled Windows 10 from scratch, and it wouldn't activate. <laughs> oh, there's an easy workaround for that. <laughs> Anyways, short version sort of... Uh, I, I know, but a short version of a long story. Yeah, I just... Uh, sometimes I hate Windows. Well, you could always upgrade to Linux. I, I, I do. Uh, Linux Mint is my favorite. <laughs> right now it does move every once in a while but mint is awesome or you could upgrade to the mac os yeah but then i have to, mac I device have to no buy never mind just kidding mac let's say goodbye <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. All right, i'm done i'm done ranting you guys can go um i got a rave um I just got a new app based on a, another podcast that I was watching, His uh, the recommendation of, of the podcaster, uh, Comixology, mm. which is a digital comic app. And I love going to the comic shop and buying physical comics, but uh, I was on vacation for a week and a half and didn't want to take comics with me to get ruined or buy comics there and not have a way to get them back. So um, I went ahead and downloaded it and got a few, you know, I paid for a one month subscription to Comixology and they have a an unlimited thing. I don't even remember what it was, seven, eight, ten dollars or something like that for a month. And it gave me, I, I was able to download some comics that, that I hadn't read, that I'd heard good things about. Uh, Lock and Key was, the one I downloaded, or the one that I actually read that I downloaded, I downloaded the trade paper, which is like six issues, and um, watched it. It's an amazing app. It looks really good. The image quality is super high. It takes forever to download unless you have like a super high speed connection. It, it, I don't even know how big they are, but it took like 20 minutes to download each comic <laughs> um, on my dad's wife, high high-speed internet, which I, I think it's like 20 megabits per second. So it's not super fast, but it took like 20 minutes and me maybe their connection to Comixology is not super fast, but whatever. Um, it has this thing called Guided View where it actually takes you from each pane on your comic and transitions to the next pane. And if the pane's larger and the font is, and the text is smaller, it'll like kind of zoom in after it shows you the pane to the text so you can read it easily and then it'll transition out. Um, or sometimes if, for dramatic effect, if being zo starting zoomed in is more dramatic, it'll actually start zoomed in. So somebody's actually gone through the comic and selected some transitions. So there was one where it started zoomed in and you read the text of the things people were saying and then it zoomed out and you got the whole picture and it, and it was a lot more dramatic to have it happen that way. Um, it was, it's, it's a really cool comic app and a, a really reasonable way to get your comics, especially if you want to be able to travel with your, with your reads. Um, so, you know, still go to your comic shop, support your local comic shop and, 
and buy comics physically, especially your favorite ones. But this is a great way to be able to read them on the road and stuff like that. So now, the, the Comicsology does almost all the comics, but there's like another competing one for the other half of the comics or something like that, right? Or is Comicsology just all of them? It seemed like it had everything. I mean, I, everything I looked up, it had. Now, the unlimited service that I paid ten dollars for for a month while I was traveling. It, it does not have everything at all. It has a lot of Marvel stuff. It has a lot of image stuff. It had some of the Valiant and, and various other indie indie companies that I read, but it didn't have some of the like more obscure older titles that I like. Like a, one of my favorites is Blade of the Immortal. It didn't have those. You had to buy those individually. It had them, but they weren't part of the Unlimited. So you had to pay $10 or right. whatever for the trade paper. Um, DC is not on there, at least not very much of it uh, in the in the service. But again, you can get all of their comics. So it, it seemed like they had just about everything to buy, but the Unlimited only had about half of the the publishers that I'm aware of. That, that is about what it seemed. Um, either way, it's it's a great app, a great service, and you know if you're just looking for a way to get your comics in travel with it this is a really good way to do it cool so, cool um the other thing i wanted to mention was there's this thing i've heard about and i, I think we might have even mentioned it today when wow. we're talking about espn but cord cutting mm -hmm. it's really awesome i want to rave about that because i, I never I never was... heard of it <laughs> what is this thing <laughs> at my at my folks house uh for a week and a half they still have direct tv and oh man, it was just it was just so annoying having to switch between all the devices and the the cumbersome user interface to getting to the to the content that I wanted to watch and stuff. And you know, getting the shows and having limited DVR space and all of these things. It was just ah oh, man, I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that kind of stuff anymore. Back in my day, I had to stick a VCR into the tape, into the VCR yeah. recorder. Back in my day, you had I... to get up, walk across the room, and turn the dial and hope <laughs> that it was worth it. No, oh, back in back in your day, you turned the dial for your dad, right? That's right. He said, all I right, was, turn it I again. I was the youngest, so I was always the one that was like, hey, go change the channel. <laughs> I was the remote. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it, it was voice control back then that was like we took a step uh. back for a while is it was like hey mike go change the channel and mike got up and he changed the channel well but that was that that's the old version of voice control that version of voice control has been around for a thousand years but it's become <laughs> not as prevalent because it's typically called slavery Eh, it's a living <laughs> Oh, good. I'm glad somebody got it. <laughs> oh, the Flintstones. For those of you that are too young to get it. Um, all right. The, I, oh. the, other, the other thing I would say is I set up like his Harmony remote and all of those things. And he did still, my dad did still have a DVD player hooked up right underneath his Blu-ray player. And I was like, we should disconnect this and you should never touch that again. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned VCR, and I was like, well, now DVD players are the VCR players of, yeah. of yesteryear. Yes, they are. Yep. So, I got one thing. Uh oh You know, for the last couple months since Hulu updated their interface, I've been crying <laughs> and complaining that it doesn't respect my non autoplay settings and it was yep, screwing up everything before. we know it does kind of, i stumbled both, across something yeah, i stumbled across something a couple days ago they now added the feature to turn off autoplay hey you, and you know where they work? hit it oh it does but <laughs> to get to it you have to be in the video and you have to know to push down to bring up the bar and push down again. <laughs> and apparently there's a menu underneath the bar and it's there. But I, I've been in that menu before and it didn't, that setting didn't used to be there. Cause, and you know, it was just added because it's at the very bottom. 
So they added it to the very bottom of the list as not to disrupt other stuff, right? And But all I care about is it is there. But I had a startling discovery that made me kind of mad at myself was I haven't used my Google TV in a long time. Or I mean my Android TV box, the Mi Box. I hooked up this home and I, I heard that, oh, you can, I read and stuff about you can control it uh, android tv with the uh, home so i turned on my android tv logged into hulu to find out it's still got the old interface and i've been complaining yes, it that it's gone <laughs> it's like why haven't i been using this and then i was using android tv and it was still all the stuff that was missing i went oh that's why i haven't been <laughs> using this and i can't and my google home mini insists that it doesn't know how to talk to the android tv so even uh, though it's added as a device oh in the app okay yeah i asked it to start something i i oh start and it told me oh you have to specify the show when i said open netflix so i did and then it goes oh yeah i just told you how to do that but i don't know how to do that yeah. <laughs> it's like okay thank you uh, yeah there's there's definitely a support issue with the me box it needs to be addressed yeah one way or another so uh, but also when i was going through the settings android all android tvs apparently have the option to auto launch sling i've never uh, seen that before that was the thing that was introduced by the sling uh player which is an Android TV box that it right. when you start it up, it's auto launches sling. And apparently that option is in the Mi box. It, I, yes, it is. And it, I turned it on. It didn't do anything. It uh, it does it for me whenever the Mi box is actually powered off, which is not sleep mode. Mm. But it's actually powered off. The Mi box will turn on and go straight to YouTube to Sling TV, which actually I'd like to turn off. I need to figure out how to turn that oh, off. Oh, yeah, so, it's, it's in the settings. Uh, it I, is, I found it by accident. I'll it, is a, it is something that that the Mi Box is, uh, has uh, picked up as its own uh, own little feature. I don't think every single Android well, TV has Well, okay, it and I was wondering, because uh, the, Sling, the Sling player is running Android yep. TV, so yep. it makes perfect sense that Google would just rather than do it because they don't like doing one-off uh versions of android um they don't want to do that so when i saw it it made perfect sense that oh okay yeah it's just a option in android it's only automatically turned on on uh the sling player but uh it yeah so i don't know uh, i'm curious to see if someone has a shield out there that wants to speak up whether or not uh whether or not uh that option is there but cool. we we can check uh mike and i can check it when we go to ces you should yeah all right anything else guys anything we're forgetting did, did you have anything jimmy i don't think you ranted or raved about anything yeah i didn't have much i mean there's i i can quickly say there's a couple of shows i'm watching i'm about three episodes into the new hulu original the runaways um not bad i would it's not gonna make my top anything list but is uh, it better than the gifted which is like the same show on fox <laughs> I've not seen that one. Oh. So I can't I can't say, but it's on uh, Hulu as well. But, but the but it, it's uh yeah, so the Hulu original Runaways, it's um you know, they've got some uh good talent in there. Um it, it'll be actors that you've recognized from other shows, but not the the um the top line uh, actors I would say. Uh it uh but it but it is it's entertaining it kind of keeps you on edge a little bit and then you know it's part of the marvel universe well it's right. part of the x-men universe that's why i asked you about uh mm. about the gifted which is also the x-men universe which is because fox owns uh or is able x-men so they've got uh legion on fx mm. uh the gifted on fox and mm -hmm. uh, the Runaways on Hulu. Hulu. And they are all, t 
technically, I don't know if they're same time frame, but I haven't watched the Runaways yet. But they're all same universe. They could be potential crossover um, between those shows. But yeah, yeah. So so I'm, I'm liking the show pretty well. I'm also uh, in the uh, third season of um, uh, The Blind Spot. Uh, I like that show. I like the first two seasons. I'm, I've, I'm about two episodes in, into the third season of that. Um, so, uh, and you know, as far as new shows, that's a, that's about it. You know, that, that's about all I've had time for. You know, here here recently. Yeah. Did Did anybody else go see Coco? Yeah. The new Disney movie. Yep. I, I took my kids to- over the weekend. <laughs> I, I also went and saw it. What do you think, Clyde? Uh, it was it was great. Um, I concur with what uh, Brian and Bryce said in the fact that you're better off if you have no idea what to expect. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. I was really pleasantly surprised, though, that what they did at the end of the credits. Did you stick around all the way to the end? Um, I'm not sure that we did. And I mean, it's not anything spoilery, but at the very end of the credits, they put up, they covered the entire theater screen with pictures and it said, these are the people that are important to us. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, we didn't stick around. Um, We, I, um, we honestly went because my kids are huge fans of Frozen Mm -hmm. and we wanted to see the Olaf's christmas short up front (laughs) and we were like eh that coco show looks like it might be good disney tends to make good movies but it doesn't look terribly compelling i'm not even gonna you know i don't think i ever actually watched a whole trailer or anything um but i went and of course we stayed for the whole movie and i thought it was great i really enjoyed the movie it was really well done i learned a lot about another culture and uh yeah, it was just really cool. I, I thought it was a great movie. It, it, it's definitely worth seeing. It, it's funny that you brought up the Frozen short because <laughs> um, you guys are actually going to get a preview of a letter that I wrote earlier to Cord Killers, um, which eh, you never know if it's going to make it. But it was funny because when I was at the theater, like two minutes before the show started, the manager comes in and he walks right up to me and my daughters. And they're like, he's like, I need to let you know that there is a Disney short. It's 21 minutes. You're not in the wrong theater. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? He says, you guys are already in here. We're putting up signs. So you didn't see it. Apparently <laughs> a whole bunch of people uh, kept leaving and going back and complaining that they were in the wrong theater <laughs> because they, they weren't told that nobody knew about this frozen short and I didn't know about it until he said something, and it it apparently made a lot of people angry. Um, yeah, we, so that's that's weird because it seemed like, and, and maybe I think maybe the difference is that my whole family are really big Disney fans, oh, okay. and so they were on top of the whole Olaf's Christmas whatever it was called, um, and so we knew about that. As, almost as soon as we knew about Coco, the movie itself. And so we knew that that was going to be a short in front of the show. We went, again, in large part to see that. We would have watched Coco eventually just because it's a Disney movie and we we trust them to make good movies. But I don't think we would have seen it opening night if it wasn't for the short. And at, at least at the theater we were at, I got that sentiment from a number of people that they were there in large part for the short. Yeah. Well, and it's it's it was funny because my daughter was she decided she should probably go to the bathroom before the movie starts. So she left, and then when she came back in, she said they're putting up a sign, something about a <laughs> Frozen short. And I was thinking, oh, it's due to technical difficulties, we're unable to show it. And I was like, I don't care. And then, like, a (laughs) few seconds later, the manager came in just like, I'm so sorry, but you you need to know this. It's important. Like, what is going on? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it was was pretty funny. That is funny. Yeah, so. 
Um, all right. Well, I guess we can call it. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, glad to have you back, Jimmy. Uh, it's been a while. Um, glad, glad to be back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, all of you out there, chat realm, thanks for uh, making this worth doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we still need a few followers. We are sitting about 34, 35, and there's some place on our goal, uh, on our path to 50. Um, and so, yeah, you know anybody that hasn't, just drag them over. You walk up to them at work and force them to log into Twitch and click follow. That's perfectly fine as long as you don't hurt them. Um, <laughs> you got family members uh, out there that don't care. Just yep. log into their account, click follow. We don't, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise, uh, we will be back next Wednesday as we are every Wednesday here on Twitch at 9 p.m. Central. Guys, thank you, and we will see you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this. <laughs> 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 <laughs>